Um, I well. have to tell you that as I've gotten older, Tums has literally saved my life. Tums? Tums. Yeah. And I saw the funniest TikTok where this girl was showing, she's probably like our age, the past two times that she's been drinking, <laughs> she's DM Tums on Instagram <laughs> asking to be an influencer. And she showed these heartfelt messages. I have to find them. But she's like, Tums really is the greatest thing in the entire world. You guys really help my tummy when it hurts. And as I've gotten older, it's the only thing. And I'd be the greatest influencer and really bring your brand and message to so many people. They do work. I remember I was at an event, a Days of Our Lives, like an, an actual NBC sponsored event where a couple times a year they will um, spend an, a silly amount of money to send like 10 of us to yeah. a state. They fly us first class. They put us up. Everything's free. Uh, and we go and meet fans in a mall or in a bookstore or wherever it may be. And I never forget this one day we were having drinks and the next morning we were all sitting around a table getting ready for our big event. And Robert Scott Wilson was like... Um, he goes, man, I could really use some some Tums. <laughs> and I was like, I got some on me. <laughs> he goes, bro, he's like, you have them, you have them on you? And I pulled them out. Stop it, because you have the little... I have the little Tums, and he, I just feel like he was stunned. <laughs> he's like... He's like, you, you, oh, you have them with you? Solid. I was like, here you go. And, uh, but yeah, I think just the older you get for some reason, like, you just... Yeah, and we have a travel bag now that we're older of, like, little medicines... Tylenol, Tums, anything that you might need, lipstick, or not lipstick, lip balm. Yeah. You know, you just, you got to be prepared. And even when we were flying before everything in the world, you know, just happened, we would have legit bags of anything you need. Yeah, you need a for sure, you know, just so that you can have yourself a great night's sleep. Of your course. lips are good, your tummy's yeah. good, and it's and it's amazing. Um, well, I want to hop in today, today's episode, and then we've got a little Days of Our Lives news for you. So we're going we're gonna to fill you in there. And then we also are continuing our adventures of looking for a place. And if looking for an apartment with only five weeks left wasn't taxing enough, we've <laughs> thrown back in. Uh, while we're there, we might as well look at wedding venues. So anyway, let's hop into it. Welcome, everyone, to the Freddie and Alyssa Show. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe like comment all that fun youtube stuff if you're watching on facebook like and follow if you're listening on a platform like itunes hello <laughs> leave us a five-star review if you think we deserve it uh we've been putting up content now for three years we're having an absolute blast so we want to thank you all for being on this journey with us and um i also want to thank a few new members but first god <laughs> bless thee Imagine doing that in public these days. <laughs> Everyone stares at it you. It would be as if the uh, it's a scene in every Transformers movie or any like Godzilla uh -huh. movie when they everyone flips the tables and they're just running towards camera, grabbing their kid. The little bunny's on the ground. The mom swoops them up so that the kid doesn't go back for the bunny. Uh, but a shout out to our new members. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Lois Fletcher, Amy Belmont, and Ken C. Welcome to the membership welcome, program. Welcome. If you want to learn how to be a member, a producer of the Freddie and Alyssa show, the link is in the description or you click the join button on YouTube, support now on Facebook. We give you a bunch of exclusive content. Um, we even go live, which by the way, this Sunday, October 25th, we're doing the members live stream. So if you want to hang out live with us, ask questions that's part of the deal that's part of the deal of being a member so if you want to check that out you can do so below welcome new members um we and this appreciate is going to be so our much. first live right here in florida remember in florida, we yeah. did our last one right oh before yeah we left. when we were leaving so that was fast. tough <laughs> not to bring back old stories but we found out two hours before our last month's live that the shipping company canceled and we were going through all this stuff and it actually helped us. It was therapeutic uh -huh. to do a live and to just get our minds off everything, but it all worked out. We've been here. It's been great. Can't believe we've been here for over two weeks. Um, but uh, before we get into our apartment search, I want to talk about the days of our lives news because this stuff interests me. I don't know why. I just love innovation and creativity. Yeah. So as you all know, John Aniston, very young man, very young man, um, he is very youthful. He's very sharp. He goes to work. He knows all his lines. John Aniston, my Uncle Vic, Uncle Vic, <laughs> is 87 years old. Mm -hmm. 87 years young, I like to say. Um, he shows up to work. He always has a great personality. He's always telling jokes. He gets his work done. He is sharp. He is funny. Top 
probably the funniest person, and that's saying a lot when you got Datillo and Martzoff and Galen and all these hilarious people on set. John Aniston, though, being 87 years old during these times is a little, what would you want to call it, a little high risk during sure. these times of being out and being around people. So from the news source of the internet, we <laughs> heard that her, his daughter, the Jennifer Aniston, um, and John Aniston have been working together to talk with Days of Our Lives of building a set in John Aniston's house and having actors from the show to do the scenes go to his house, be tested before, so that he doesn't have to go and be exposed to a hundred people. That and is so cool. Is that just speculation, or did I think it's it legit. That it there were, happened? This happened yesterday. There were a couple different uh, news articles that I had right here, and they're literally in talks doing it. So, so it's being built. I believe it's so. in talks of like, yeah, that sounds good. Or is the Curiacus Mansion duplicate built inside of his house? Let's see, let's see. Okay, so Jennifer Aniston urges Days of Our Lives producers to film her father's scenes uh, at home amid yeah, you know what? happening. <laughs> um, we don't mention the C word here. <laughs> Jen Aniston's not ready to risk the health of her father's health for work. Um, the 87-year-old John Aniston is set to resume work in his ongoing drama, Days of Our Lives. The actor who's been a part of this daytime drama series from 1983 was planning on heading to Burbank to reprise his role as Victor Kiriakis. However, Jen wasn't okay with it. According to The Sun, she decided to put her foot down and requested her father to talk to the producers. She initiated the scenes featuring her dad to be uh, filmed at his home situated in an exclusive gated community. Jen persuaded him to talk to producers about taping his scenes at home. The execs have agreed. Oh. Oh, so they have agreed. The source informed the outlet. The insider also added that the scene partners would be sh sh chauffeured and, of course, tested for prior to arrival. Oh, oops, I said it. Let me read that again. I'll just beep it out. Okay. Um, yeah, so the news comes out. Yeah. So basically they've agreed. I would assume right now that they're building they're it, building right? It. Yeah, I think that's that's amazing. I just love the innovation because I think we started talking about this maybe when it all first kind of happened. Mm -hmm. Not that when it first happened, we were in like a panic, like the rest of the world, um, and everyone's still panicking, but um, in a different way. We're we're now it's shifted to the point where we're starting to see innovation come out of this. Mm -hmm. And if you even look back in history, anytime you're in a very tough position like we are now, where people are forced to innovate, there are so many things that are now coming to fruition because people are like, yeah, we're going to get to this. Now yeah. everyone, like even I even heard like, you know, alcohol breweries um, are starting to make or did start to make hand sanitizer. Um, I wish I had more examples. There's tons of different huge companies that are making, you know, protective gear yeah. who are helping out. And I love that, um, you know, the NBA did the bubble and people are just making it work. Tyler Perry did his thing. Mm -hmm. And now days, I love that they're being innovative because I just think the, not only is it great to continue the show, but I think it's, I love when something's new and innovative. Sure. It, it gets me excited. Like how interesting is that going to be to watch the first scenes that the set's built in his house? I Are you going to be able to tell? Is it going to be perfect? You won't be able to tell Is it going to, you know, I just think it's very fascinating. And then, um, you know, that, that just, that could be even further into the future of like what people do, that you can do it from your house, that there's a way to... <sighs> to do that um it's obviously going to be temporary because once this all gets cleared up um if they can figure out a way to, to do so where it's safe but can i ask you though because they were saying that the actors would be would go to his house does he generally have a lot of scenes that are with a lot of people is it usually one-on-one because i know you've worked with him quite a bit but i feel like he does a lot of phone calls too or am i making that up he does a lot of phone calls but for the most part i mean i think 90 percent of all my scenes with Uncle Vic is in the Kiriakis Mansion. So if I had to guess, they're probably gonna build um, like a quarter of that set hmm. that looks, you know, cause people are gonna be familiar with the, and to be honest with you in editing, you could kind of pan at the studio to the whole entire Kiriakis Mansion. Mm -hmm. And then you could cut in to oh, him yeah. in his set where you almost believe like, oh, he's just sitting on the chair there and the other person's talking, but if someone's gonna walk in, I don't know, but I'm sure with editing, with people coming in and being able to cross shoot that, you're gonna be able to make believe that. I don't think you'll be able to tell. You're not gonna be able to tell. Especially if actors are going to him. 
and, and, and honestly, it. they're probably going to save it for very um, important scenes that need to be done in person. But I bet you they'll probably do a lot more phone calls because that's going to be much easier. It's true. Because it's that's true. what we do. Like anytime there's there's times that I do phone that I was doing phone calls and you're just at the Caracas Mansion in the foyer by yourself. Yeah. So I'm just there, and then you know if, if Chandler happened to be at work early that day and my scenes were up first, he would read opposite me. Yep. But ninety percent of the time, it's the stage manager reading opposite. So you're just waiting, going, hey, when are you going to be home? <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, well, I'm going to, you know. And, yeah. and so they're probably going to do that. But I just love the innovation. I'm really curious how that's all going to work out. And Kudos, I know though, to days for making it all work during this time and being, like, forward thinking and open to it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because it's a lot of crazy stuff. I wonder if that one soap is still using mannequins. <laughs> <laughs> or was it blow up <laughs> There's a lot of good ideas and bad <laughs> ideas. And the mannequin, listen, if you have a stand in mannequin, but I even saw like you the clip see, where the, per, the actor's putting the hair, hand through the hair of the mannequin. You can't, you can't do that. But I guess it's working great. And people are trying to think. But with the camera tricks of shooting on any show or movie, is you can make people appear to be closer together or further away depending on how you shoot it. So oh, even yeah. you and I could sit at this table and people are assuming the table's only this big because you can see my hand now and there. Right. But you and I could go sit way in the back and talk to you and then I could shoot my scenes where you're not even this close to me. Right. So they're, they're doing, you know, I, I don't know what they're doing personally over there, but I know that they're making it work and um, I think they're getting their back. I haven't heard anything um, or maybe they're not, they're not back yet. I don't know. I haven't heard yeah. anything. I'm a little out of the loop, but, <laughs> um, but yet, you know, I haven't heard anything positive or negative which kind of means maybe it's positive yeah. that everything's kind of good and whoever going working yeah so hey uncle vic that's awesome yeah good for you that's really cool it's really cool so maybe more info will come out on that but i'm looking forward to seeing what that what those scenes look like and how that all can you imagine jen aniston be like dad i'm just gonna call <laughs> Hey guys, <laughs> Dad needs a set at home. Can we make this happen? <laughs> Maybe. Who? Kn I don't know. I don't know how it all went down, but I'm glad that he's safe and that they are just being innovative. And yeah, I think that's super cool. Absolutely. So, so that's really great. Um, but what? How was our? How was our? Uh, how was our day yesterday? What did you? What did you think of our adventure? I loved our adventure. So yesterday we went to Sarasota, Florida, which is on the west coast of Florida the most beautiful beaches I think I've ever seen. So wide, the white sand. We didn't get to unfortunately see the cotton candy skies. I've heard that the sunsets there are insane, but it was a little bit overcast yesterday. Yeah, you know, had a little lackluster. It was still beautiful. It's so gorgeous. But... Um, but yeah, so we did that. We also shot some stuff. We're trying to put a little vlog together. So Freddie's going to be working on that. You think you're going to have that available Sunday? I think it'll be available Sunday. Yeah. I just got to yeah. look through it because we were kind of just taking footage. So yeah. I got to see if I can create some sort of story. But even if I can, I think it's just fun to show a bunch of clips what and throw in to. some fun music. And a vlog is just like, you know, fun. Well, because we went to Sarasota for a lot of different reasons. We wanted to go see it. But, you know, not only are we trying to figure out where we want to live, but we're also trying to figure out where we want to get married. You know, at least start planning some stuff because we have some ideas, some different dates out there. And it's um, it's a little overwhelming once you sit down and start doing it. Would you agree with that? It is. You just got to take one thing at a time. And that's why I, I really, really want over the next week, because in Florida, I'm starting to realize too, just um, the real estate, um, even like apartments, you know, they're available. Mm-hmm. We, we've talked about this on the last one where even the real estate agents are a little more lax mm -hmm. in the sense, not real estate agents, whoever books these maybe the real estate agents, whoever yeah. books the rentals. But it's kind of like, hey, you know, I feel like that's the ad here in Florida. Hey, what's up? Um, you know, we got this apartment being available. It's going to be available in a few weeks. So if you want to apply, you know, we'll get back to you sometime this week. It just kind of feels like in LA, if you see it go up in 30 minutes, if you don't call it's and they gone. don't answer and you don't see it, it's gone. Uh -huh. You have to be... We're here, I feel like it's been four days and that thing's still available. So I don't feel pressured, yeah. but I want to find one that goes, hey... It's available November 25th. Right. Great. Well, let's just go look at it. Let's get it so that it's done. Yeah. And that could be one thing off the plate and we're just done. Yeah. And then the whole wedding thing we can focus on and that'll be it. Yeah. Because the big move was our big focus and Oof. just getting adjusted. But now that we have a schedule down, once we get the place, then it's just fun like wedding planning a little bit and then just doing the grind, you know, working out, building the podcast, like doing that whole thing. And 
I still have to use the row machine. We haven't really fully been able to use it yet because we weren't here yesterday. Tonight will be the first night. The next few days, we actually have some time to... How was it when you were doing it? It's um, it's great, uh -huh. but it's definitely... The only thing I'm comparing it to are the state-of-the-art ones that, that are probably $3,000 at the gym that oh. just feel so different, where this one was like 300 bucks, so you can imagine. But you're still getting the workout, but it, it doesn't... Um, yeah, you just know the difference of anything yeah, you buy. If you buy something that. that's the cheaper one, but we just wanted it just a little bit, um, just to work the upper body, do the put, you know, do some push-ups. And um, do you wear sneakers on a rowing machine? Yeah, it's probably yeah. best. It's always better to work out in sneakers. Yeah. Okay, well, so, we'll try it out. We'll yeah, keep we'll, you guys posted. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're gonna do all, we're gonna do that. And but yeah, it, it was fun. It was it was definitely fun just traveling around. This is a such an interesting time for us because it's the first time in our lives that we've got this, um, I guess you'd call it just freedom, <laughs> that we have our accountability to our podcast and YouTube schedule, which mm -hmm. is a blessing. I'm so glad we decided to do that because mm -hmm. it creates that accountability for us. Sure. Even yesterday, we were like, well, we're driving an hour and 40 minutes in Sarasota. We wanna check out Bradenton, Lakewood Ranch. We didn't have time. We're like, why don't we stay at a hotel? But we knew we had our podcast. Mm -hmm. And so that is, um, that's great because you need accountability, but we have so much freedom that we can do whatever we want right now. Yep. And I think being able to document that journey and produce the content around it is just is such a blessing because we've always dreamed of being able to do what we're doing right now yeah. and been working towards it for almost seven years. Yeah. And, um, and how interesting we didn't know what was going to happen in the world in 2020 and how yeah. working from home would be so crucial. Yeah. So... I'm just glad that we kind of just stayed with it and that we've been able to do this full time because it was just amazing to wake up yesterday and just go, do you want to go to Sarasota today? I'm like, yeah. I remember thinking that in the car when we were driving. I was like, how cool that this morning we're just like, hey, let's go. Yeah. Hopped in the car, brought the dog. He's such a good boy, but I feel like sometimes when you have, you know, a small animal with you, especially when you're going into places, a little more stressful, I guess. Yeah. You know, um, but luckily, I mean, there weren't that many people out yesterday, which was great. Well, we look. Yeah. <laughs> we don't go anywhere if they do. <laughs> no. Yeah. The, the, where we went to eat, the outside patio was um, empty. Yeah. More than even six feet apart. So we felt really comfortable. But if it was packed, we wouldn't have went mm -mm. there. But it's, um, but yeah, with Benji, it's so interesting when it comes to some places are like, oh, what a cute little dog. Here's a dog bone. Do you want a dish? Do you want a dog dish? And then other yeah. people are like oh, you know, you can't have the dog or whatever it may be, but then it's outdoors. So it's very confusing on what's pet friendly and what's not. Even too, when we were at the Ritz in New Orleans on our trip, we like went down and were able to get some food to go and stuff. And he was able to be out on your lap. I was like, oh my God, the dog. You just never know. Yeah. And then it almost ruins, like in my mind, I think if someone just goes, hey, we really can't have dogs here. And, you know, then we're just like, yeah, but... Like, it's all good. And then you feel like people are behind the scenes talking about you. <laughs> so I was really paying attention to the waitress yesterday being like, does she hate us or does she and, not? And you look at everyone who passes by. Yeah, I'm paying there, attention. Like, I was like, are you all talking about talking us about or are you us? not talking about no, us? I don't think they're talking Everyone about didn't care. I think it's just people having to check the box in case a manager or someone sure. came that they told us no. And we yeah. were just like, okay. and But like still made it happen. I feel Scottsdale... Um, and every, San Antonio and El Paso and Texas, they were so dog friendly, mm -hmm. like beyond. Just You just never know. And I'm always surprised when they are. I'm like, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I have to hide them in the bag. There, there's, a lot, there's a lot of differences that we're realizing. And I, and I, and I think that's why um, when I listen to a lot of stand-up comedians, they have the greatest perspective on Americans because mm -hmm. they tour um. and they're in intimate settings where they're doing jokes and they're able to get instant live feedback of how people are in each state. And you really understand how big the United States is because that's how I even feel being in Florida is we have just been in LA for so long mm -hmm. that I, I almost not forgot because I, we went home to Ohio, we've traveled and that's helped. But I kept thinking that LA was a mirror of every city in the country. And when you start traveling and you stop in El Paso and you stop in different places, the way people drive, the way people act, the way people um, just in general, yeah. like you just, it's, it's a different culture, even though we all share the same land, everybody is different. 
And that's what is what I w- I'm really hoping for, even during this year's election, of just all this tension of just taking the perspective that we all don't live in Ashtabula, Ohio, or Orlando, Florida, or Los Angeles, or San Francisco. Like people live in a million different cities Very with different a million lives. different experiences. And you realize, like even in Florida, I got to tell you something I never saw in LA. Like you saw people, you saw some like Trump signs and stuff in LA mm-hmm. during um, like caravans or right. when they stand out with the flags and stuff. But to see, I've never once saw a Trump sign in a yard. At a house, yeah. And I don't believe it's, I don't think it was because they didn't support him. I think it was because this vibe in LA is that, like, I had a feeling you'd get that ripped out or something. Yeah, oh yeah. And as we travel in Florida, you go town to town and it's just, you see Biden, Trump, Biden, Trump, mm-hmm. Biden, Trump, even neighbors. We, oh, yeah. we drove through that neighborhood. The oh, in neighbors, Winter Park. Yeah. It's they, right next to each other. They, the neighbors had a Biden and Trump sign and it was, it was almost refreshing to think that these people live next to each other. They have different ideas. And they're voting differently, but they're neighbors and, and they love each other and, and agree to disagree. And they feel comfortable to each have the sign out yes. that the other one's not going to There is a way less tension politically uh-huh. in Florida. And I think because it's a swing state. And I, I think because I, I, I just, when you drive, because we went a lot of places. Yeah. It is, I have never driving around Los Angeles just seen, it's, it's Trump, Biden, Trump, Biden, Trump, Biden. LA is just very, you, you'll see some Biden, but then that's kind of it. But there's not a lot of signs in people's yards. There's not a lot of signs on businesses. Well, you know what else I've noticed a lot outside of L.A., going through all these places, and especially in Florida, you'll see people who are running just, you know, for Local. locally. They have their signs up and their faces, and we see all their names. Like, I've never seen that ever in L.A. Yeah, maybe, ever. I don't know what that what, is. And maybe it's just so big. That we haven't paid attention or in the right neighborhoods where people put signs. I don't know. <laughs> but there's even huge billboards that you would see the next movie coming out on. Did you ever see the big electronic billboards? They even have huge billboards that I've seen dur- when we were driving through. It's uh, Trump billboards. In Florida? Yeah. But like oh. the electronic ones that change. Huh. And so I was like, we ne- they, they took, the- when someone did the whole Trump thing on the Hollywood Hill there, remember they had it taken down? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So well, it's. Well, California is super progressive. And I think, too, that's why it's been a little bit of a culture shock at times going to certain places in Florida because we were used to, oh, if you go anywhere, everyone has their masks on. You literally drive with them on because it's such closed quarters, you know? And here, people will walk into a business and they're, you could tell they're like, I don't want to put it on. I don't want to put it on. <laughs> like, fine, I'm about to walk in. Here's my mask. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can feel it. In the second, before the, the automatic doors even open for someone to leave the grocery store in Florida, they're like, and they, like just pull it down. Yeah. Right? Like they, they yeah, can't, can't. I'm like, even. just, why don't you just put it on in your car? <laughs> like we just leave ours in our car now because we have a house. Yeah. So you just, you park in the grocery store, put, put it, on. it on. I walk in, I grab my public subs. I walk out, I get in the car, I put my seatbelt on, I take it off, I set it down, a little hand sanitizer, I'm on my way. But yeah, it is 100% um, way more lax. And I noticed that way more in Sarasota than, I mean, we haven't been that many places around here, but I feel, because even in Sarasota, which, which was very interesting, we sat outside because there was like nobody there. But they had the inside open, and people were like kind of sitting around yeah, the, the bar. bar. And I was like, they kind of had separation. But like the like you said, that girl was in the bathroom, no mask on, listening to music, like running around. I was like, <laughs> stay in the stall, stay in the stall. <laughs> but yet again, that's what we're used to. California. We, we yeah. learned about this 2020 thing being in LA, yeah. and, and everyone knows how aggressive LA has been about it. So yeah. this is kind of what we've known. So I wonder if we would have been in Florida in March and we would see our peers if how we would think differently about it. But I have friends who live in Florida, South Florida, and they're they're how we are too, so. But you can definitely see the general consensus of, like even leaving that hotel when we got, I mean, the people walking in and it was an older couple. Like they were in their 70s and they had it in their hand and they're walking in and I like moved off to the side and and, and they're like, uh, it's kind of like they get in and they're like, oh yeah, like I got to put this on. But they do it. Like six seconds too late. Just yeah, put it on the car. On. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. And I hope, I pray that when people look at me, that my energy isn't as crazy as I oh, feel it is. it is inside. Because it is. anytime I see a person, I'm like, 
<laughs> well, I try to do it. I try to do it very cool. You are very distinct. You're just like, like the, we, we were we were leaving the beach yesterday. Um, not a soul in sight. We we might as well have been on Mars. Yeah. And there just happened to be a guy that appeared out of thin air, and he had no mask, and he's at the beach. That's fine. We're the only like crazies with California. Them. Yeah, they're like these people are from California. No one at the beach had a mask on. We had ours down around our when no one's around, no around but we yeah. had it. No one had a mask there. And what we were walking, but you just turn, grab the dog and you walk yeah. as if he's like a zombie. I kind of just go, "Hey, you know, if he were to cough or sneeze my way, I would panic, but he's just minding his business, but chilling." I don't want to be too late if he did cough or sneeze and I was right there. Then that freaks me out. I'm I'm getting way more just like you're more relaxed with it. I mean, even when we were, we had to get cash out for the valet before we left yesterday in Sarasota. And I just like, I was hot. I had my mask on. We had the dog and we were trying to do it. And I was like, I was like, babe, I was like, just, just come down here. Let me figure it out. Just come down here. And like, I was like, I need to be away from people. It's, oh it's, yeah. It's just a little stressful sometimes. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm very, uh, I look at it as, as you know, I, I'm being respectful of others. Yeah. I will always um, put it on to be respectful because so many people do. Yeah. And um, but I'm very when I'm outside away from people, well, yeah. I don't care. You know what I mean? And even when we're outside the beach, I just don't think it's a big deal. I think it's I think it's the gatherings. Like if that bar was packed, I think that's the, the problem. And I'm just wishing everyone you know well because I'm you know you're you're reading reports about potentially. Um, you know what these next couple months are going to be and I hope that it doesn't get too bad bad. but we do have you know Halloween and then you know you have the um it's flu season too coming up and if that's going to create any um the rallies restlessness or like protests there's I'm sure there's going to be depending on regardless of who wins there's going to be obviously half the country upset one way or the other and there's you know and people are gonna get together and that's everyone's right to do that but it is during the pandemic you got halloween parties you've got the election you've got thanksgiving you've got christmas you've got new year's it's getting cold around the country so i just Mm -hmm. hope people are staying safe um but we're again anytime we talk about this kind of stuff we're we we have our opinion on it but everyone's an adult everyone's has access to resources do what you feel you want to do um we don't judge people we just kind of run away from you um, <laughs> if you see us if you see us blink. running yeah. <laughs> we'll be gone yeah. we'll be you out. will i've never seen you move that fast it's crazy um but anywho we wanted to give you a little update on our journey uh we're gonna be back here on uh friday we appreciate you all have a great happy safe week productive week and we will be talking to you soon <laughs>